Okay, we're gonna call this meeting of the school building committee to order. Today is September 22, 2022. Uh, welcome everyone and nice to see you in person. Um, this is our first time we've been back, some of us in person. So just as a reminder, if you're going to um, talk, you have to turn on your microphone so they can hear us on the Zoom meeting. Um, and um, we'll make sure that everyone can hear us. Um, so the first item up on the agenda is the approval of the September 8 meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? Sure, I'll move. Thank you. Is there a second? Thank you, Steve. Uh, all in favor, please say, I guess. <laughs> uh, any opposed or abstentions? Okay, and Tasha, um, can you clear the notice that the meeting's being recorded? Do you see that? Um, no, I don't see anything on the Zoom. Oh, hold on, I, I got a, I got a, I got a mouse here. There we go. Okay. And I abstained because I was not at the meeting. Okay, uh, Chris Macmo abstains. Um, uh, that brings us to an opportunity for public input. Is there anybody here from the public that would like to address the building committee? Okay, um, seeing none, uh, we'll move on. And then that brings us to our contractor update. So Al, you have um, an update for us? Yes, I do. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Al. Can everyone see the full ghost on the screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So we'll go through the drone photos first. This is the uh, the rear area, the north area by the uh, uh, the old softball field. We had got mm -hmm. all the uh, uh, storage containers and uh, stockpiles out of this area. We started uh, prepping for the sod over here. So the sod should start in, uh, in about a week. This is a shot from the uh, uh, the west side of the parking lot, looking looking uh, I want to say northeast. So Al, um, you're gonna have a binder layer that goes down on that pretty soon. Is there how soon is that till that be ready? Yeah, actually, um, uh, they're coming in uh, starting Monday. They're going to uh, start fine grading the uh, bus loop and the access road down to the loading dock. And uh, they should be uh, putting the binder down Wednesday or Thursday, depending on weather. And then shortly after that, they'll be doing the binder in the parking lot. And then they'll come back and top coat everything. The, you can see the uh, the canopy is uh, is binder. Chris, can you try that again? We kind of lost you. Different from Adam. Yeah, I'm sorry, Chris. I could. Oh, is that, are you asking what a binder code is? We lost, we lost Chris's audio. Uh, we can come back to it. I, I oh. would ask what a binder code is. Oh, okay. Okay, Al. A binder code is, is just- Is binder, you use the word binder? Yeah, so I think that's what the question is basically. Um, Al, go ahead. Yes. The binder course is a, is a coarser grade. Um, is that something from yeah. Macadam or, or whatever. Um, so Chris, we're really, you're really breaking up, but um, yes. Al, why don't you go ahead and, and answer as best you can. And then if, if um, okay. Chris doesn't hear the hear his answer, then we can ask later when we get better connection. Okay, uh, so the binder uh, course of asphalt is it's a rougher um, grade of asphalt and it's, it's made to support the wear layer. Um, Usually the binder course is a little thicker than the wear course. Um, and that's, that's what we have in this case. But the binder is like, um, 
it's the base that holds the wear course. The wear course is like the finished course that uh, everyone sees. So we'll do the binder, we'll work off the binder, we'll clean it, and then between the binder and the top coat, there's a, a, a like a tar that you put down to bind the two together. Great, thank you, Al. I heard everything you said. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is the uh, a shot looking at the playground area. This is a shot of the south of uh, B building. This is a shot of the uh, the roof area of, uh, of B and A. You can see they, they've put down the flat panels, the panels on the flat roof in A. They're working on C now. They should have that done this week and then they'll move over to B. So this bus loop, they've got this prepped out today to pour. They'll pour that tomorrow. And then uh, they'll be bindering around the bus loop down this back road and into the loading dock area. And I believe into the uh, pump house as well. This is a shot of the, uh, the gym roof. You can see there's panels going on the flat roof right now. PV panels. What are those round things on the gym roof? Uh, these are the skylights in the, uh, the library. library. Ah, thank those you. Are, those are the round skylights. They look really good inside. Uh, this is a shot uh, looking at the bus loop and the, and the existing ball fields. This is a shot from the east looking west. Hal, in that shot, is the trike path at the top left of the building? The trike path is over here. Okay. But they haven't started uh, forming that up yet. Just before they do the uh, the paving on this pathway, they'll get that established over here. They're okay. coming in. Uh, they they might be coming in with trees down here at the same time. They'll they'll do the prep work for that. That that little area to the left. There, Steve, you might be looking at that's where the, the pre K K playground is going to be. Okay, got right you. next to the building. So the trike path hasn't been right. delineated. I got it. Okay, thank you. So, shot of the, uh, the main entry and the uh, entry canopy. I have a question. Um, actually, oh, thank you. Are we, are the buses going to be going in and, a, to, and around? Like, is that a really sharp turn for buses? Or are they, are they I'm sure we measured this. Like the, the, the picture that's kind of is cut off, but I'm just worried about like, it's a tight wrap around. Is that okay? Yeah, We're not yeah typically that. We, we do the radius uh, based on the fire trucks and the bus loop. So that's all been planned for. Okay. Let me see if we can get a better. Narrow. Um, oh, that's, that's it. Yeah. Right there. So that's it there. So I believe the, the buses would come in this way, yeah. drop the kids off, and then go around and out. Yes. <clears throat> This is the uh, the rear um, rain garden area. They've started uh, topsoil back here. Getting ready for grass. This is the shot of the building from the uh, west looking east. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, what is going to go into that space between the canopy and the wall of the building? Um, I believe it's just landscaping and grass. Yes. Okay. There is there is concrete directly under the canopy. Right. That go that go to the two uh, entry doors, uh, and it's concrete right out to the walkway here. And I believe that's grass with some uh, landscaping along the building line. 
Thank you. There's another shot of the building. This is the last of the drone photos, cloud photos. Can everyone see the? Yes, we can. Photo of the. So this is that uh, rain garden area where they started uh, topsoil. It's a it's a very nice, uh, rich topsoil. You can see just by the color of it between the sand and the, uh, the organic material. It's got a lot of organics in it, which is really nice. Al, is that the final grade that's on there? This is, I'm asking this is, is it looks like a sudden, a very abrupt drop. Yeah, this is this is a, a, the grade that the site guy does, and he does it with a dozer and a, and a, and a hole. Um, the landscaper comes in, and he has a, a fine grader. Um, he's actually doing the, uh, the softball field with a laser grader. So it's perfect. It, it's perfectly flat. But this is a, a this is spreading topsoil that's done with a uh, with GPS. So it's within it's within a half an inch or so, three quarters of an inch. And will the rain garden be that that deep, or will there yeah. be soil on top of that? There there is some soil on top of it, but it it is deep. It's so, it's, uh, made, it's made to it collect some, water. Is it something a kid could fall into? Um, there is a fence around it. There's a four foot fence around it. So we kind of go along the backside and up toward toward the pump house. <clears throat> this is uh, the building exterior A South. You see the gutters have been installed down here. The downspouts um, have been installed. They just got to tie into the boots. The uh, curtain wall contractor has to come and do the sunshades up here, and that will complete this elevation. And the uh, the roofer has to complete the, the rate work over here. So it's it's close to being complete. Al, I have, a, I have a question mm -hmm. about the downspouts. With all this rain we've gotten today, how has that impacted the site for today? Um, actually, they've they've done a very good job. A lot of a lot of the downspouts on this side, you can see, they're tied into the underground uh, drainage. So, so they actually work very well. But this and, is well, good... Al back on that other one. What's it? Just seems like that that um, soffit or eave or whatever it is. Yes, um, yep. has been waiting a long time. Uh, what are we waiting for? relative to other places, other, other on the building. The only thing that we need here to finish is the uh, the sunshades on these windows. Right, I'm talking about the roofer, the roofing work, the edge. Oh, uh, the roofing work, he just he just came back. He's uh, he's gonna be doing the uh, the roofing on the canopy. He's finishing up all the, uh, the little parts and pieces of the metal siding and the, and the soffits and, uh, and rings. So he's in the process of doing that now. And I was, you'll see it in other sections of the building where uh, we've got a completed facade. The next Thanks. floor, you yeah. So this is this is pretty much complete except for exterior devices, like few rows or speakers or whatever mounted to the walls up here or, or lights. But these are your sunshades at the uh, curtain wall. And these are the snap caps that go in um, and they run through the uh, the zinc siding on top of the zinc siding, um, but this is what your finished elevation would look like. And if they're if they're complete here, they're working on this side. That should be done uh, t uh, tomorrow, and then they'll, they'll work on uh, a. Now the only thing I'd like to say, Al, is that the downspouts that come down, uh, I think I discussed with Ben to make sure that we, you know, spot the grade around that foundation. Make sure that we don't have that black piping sticking up above. So that is gonna be the zinc coming down that we have our boot and that's gonna transition into the storm pipe, which we shouldn't see the black, so. Correct. And uh, along these two elevations here, you have that, that drip edge, that maintenance drip. Yep. Um, and they'll, they'll start putting that in next week before top soil. This is the loading dock area. He, he's finished the EPA on, on this 
on these two elevations here. Um, they're prepping now for paving. So every everyone is out of here. Once paving is done, we'll come back in and we'll finish. We'll do this uh, change order work on the parapet view and uh, we'll finish up the meat base siding. They're, they're working on this uh, east elevation of the gym now. They're doing the, they did this one row here and they, they started the corner and then they'll finish this elevation. Um, probably in the next uh, week, they'll be complete. Jeff, is the um, EPay on that, can you go back out please? Is yep. that um, finished in steps coming down the slope or is it? Yes, it's finished in steps, yep. So we have insect screen wrapping up there. You see the black, and then they'll come over the top, and it will be in sections that will that will step down. This is the north face of the gym and the marine uh, condoms. We closed this section off. This was a section we left open for the DOAS unit, but that's now installed. So uh, this is getting closed in. This is the EPAY corner I was referring to. Uh, this is a critical part of the site because it's the site has to match perfectly at the corner. This is a, a shot looking at the uh, the bus loop, uh, the front entrance and the canopy sections. They've so got the prepped up for pouring tomorrow, so that should be. So hold on a second here. I just want to. Show, <clears throat> sorry, show everybody that along the face of that canopy edge, I talked to Ben about making sure that those posts that come out of each of the eight inch letters that says Mansfield Elementary School is going to be centered on that next to the main entry there. So right in between where it breaks to the right, those first three or the, the second bay, third and fourth bay will center Mansfield Elementary School in there. Just another shot looking east. So, Al, is the canopy complete? The canopy uh, framing is uh, complete. They've got to do the, um, there's EPA siding that goes along the edge of the roof, and then the roofer has the uh, a rubber roof, uh, mm -hmm. rubber roof and uh, edge metal flashing. So shout out the bus loop looking west. So the shot of the front entry. Bus loop. All right, so now we're into B lower. Uh, we've got all the ceilings in. There's a couple of, uh, he's got to go back and put some cuts in. But for the most part, um, the ceilings are in. This is a typical classroom now. We've got the doors installed out of the door. We've got the, the glass is going to be in here uh, on the screen. So Al, Al, you're cutting out a little bit there towards the end. I don't know if you just need to be a little closer to your microphone. But. Oh, okay. Um, and Al yeah, so we've got the doors installed and be lower. Um, the uh, glass guy is taking this measurements on the glass, so that should be in next week. Uh, one a photo that I don't have today is we started prepping uh, the the concrete slabs for tile or uh, uh, I'll show you pictures of that at our next meeting. No, one thing though, is these doors are going to have shades behind them, right? Definitely. I believe so. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> is this cardboard around the door for a reason? Yeah, it's just to protect the door. That's all. Okay. Um, this is one of the uh, classrooms in B Upper where they've installed the uh, the wood uh, ceilings. I believe they still have to trim this out. It's kind of hard to see from photos, a little blurry, but. Uh... Yeah, so then there's some acoustical uh, panels on the 
right and left side where you see the taping on the sheetrock. And those are recessed in the same plane as the wall below. And then that whole strip light is a sort of cove light that's going to wash down. And then you have spotlights in the classroom too, besides the natural light from both ends. Mm -hmm. uh, the wood look, the, doesn't look like wood. Yeah, it's hard because it's kind of out of focus. This picture, it's it's, and the wood is kind of whitewashed. We whitewashed it to make the rooms feel uh, a little brighter when the natural light comes in. Yeah, it's hard to tell in this photo. Will it look more woody when somebody walks into the room? Oh yeah, it's it, you definitely look up and you can see it's a glue lamp beam. I think it's just kind of fuzzy. It looks like it's out of focus. This picture. Okay, I, I'm thinking about color as well as shape. Let me see if I can find a better photo. Well, I, Tony, if you've seen some of the um, glue lamp beams when you were there, all the wood is basically the same shade, right, Jeff or Al? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's close. Hmm. I don't remember seeing them. Hmm. <clears throat> Jeff, are you still looking for another? Yeah, keep going. I can I can pull it up in my architectural update. I won't have much, but I can show these. Okay. Um, so again, B lower. Um, they're going around doing all the finishes, the uh, you know the speakers and the uh, uh, light sensors and the fire alarm sprinkler heads. So the finishing touches are going on B lower. These blue spots, they're just to uh, keep any dust out of the uh, ductwork until we get that the system going. We should have that up and running within the next, well, I would say week and a half, two weeks. These are your typical one bedroom bathrooms. Uh, the only thing we have left to do is the doors and uh, they're pretty much pretty much done. We just finished up the last uh, toilet room uh, this week as far as the tile. So. Uh, I don't have any more of these to do. The elevator's in. <laughs> they came in, they, they put this elevator in in about nine days, I think. Um, the Mason did this block work yesterday. And now they're uh, going to be closing, framing this opening and drywalling this starting tomorrow. This is the uh, the cafe. This is the ceiling of the cafe. It's got the same type of wood that we were looking at earlier. Um, it's got these areas here where, where it has not been painted. It gets um, the acoustical boards and then there'll be a finishing where this is going to see here. On this side, um, these the tops of the uh, windows are acoustic panels which have been installed. And then there's another layer of acoustical panels below these windows. Um, so everyone is trying to get this area finished above uh, the floor so we can start tile. Uh, we expect to start 14 tile in the cafe on, uh, on Monday the 26th, which is this coming Monday. Oh, here's another bit. Acoustical panels all along this elevation here. And then here, where it's not painted, this will be acoustical panels as well. So it'll be some sound attenuation there. And then there's a uh, display case that goes in this re recessed opening here. Kitchen, the hood is installed. It's going to bring in a lot of the, uh, the equipment in which will set as soon as the porcelain tile is done here we'll get uh, the kitchen uh, set up and uh, ready to go we got the serving line uh, we got the rails for the serving line we got those holes cored this week uh, so once the porcelain tile is in we can get those rails started to get this area complete walk-in cooler has been installed seal has been installed so the kitchen's coming along Al, uh, has the problem with the concrete underneath the flooring been resolved? We started doing the uh, um, the grinding of the floor today. 
So it, it, the process has started. Um, this is the, uh, the stair, repair, stair number two repair. We lifted both sides up. This, I think this side was lifted five eighths and the other side was lifted three quarters. Um, so we're just waiting for um, IMTL to come out and inspect the welding. Uh, and once that's approved, then we can uh, finish up the concrete here. This is the other side. This needs a pan. This gets infilled. So they were able to do this. They did this on a Saturday when no one was around. So. Right. And the railing well, has been adjusted? The is railing has not been adjusted. Once we get the concrete poured here, because um, no one's allowed here, we got this barricaded off. So once the concrete is back in here and it's safe again, we'll they'll, they'll start working on the railing. And that is all I have for uh, photos. Okay, um, question, so Steve. Al, back to the uh, concrete issue for a second. The shot blasting is taken off the top 16th of an inch. Uh, about how thick is the slab? The slab uh, on grade is five inches, I believe. And after we shot blast off, I've had a couple of people in the community ask me this, this, just asking it just so I can be super clear. Once we shop blast off the top, there's no reason to think the concrete will degrade uh, after that. Well, we're pretty much good to go after that. Yeah, we we've we went and did uh, some concrete course where we actually drill out a section of the slab, and we had it um, analyzed by a concrete lab. And from what we got back, the um, the latents on the top of the slab is three uh, three to four mils. So if you look at a, a garbage bag, a heavy duty garbage bag is about six mils. So it's it's just a very thin layer on the top of the slab. So we're not doing the shop blasting. The shop blasting uh, you know, can go down an eighth of an inch. You're really into the, into the slab. What we're using is a, it's called a cup grinder. Uh, it has a HEPA back on it. So it grinds it and it, and it uh, picks up the dust um, in the same operation. So we're not causing a lot of dust in the building as well, which is another advantage of doing a grinder instead of a shot blaster. Great, thank you very much. That's very, very helpful. You're welcome. Chris McNamara, is your hands still up? Um, uh, Al, my question was, um... Uh, when we're looking at the shot of the ball field before, I know you have that access road for bringing supplies in and out during the construction. Does that stay? I can't remember. There is an access road that go that was existing and it goes behind that softball field backstop. And there's uh, some parking back there. It's the same uh, material that is in the front parking area. It's like a it's like a stone dust uh, pathway or. It's actually a, a small drive in, in, a, in parking on the uh, east side of that backstop. So those improvements stay that you've made to get all the way back to the building or only no, around to the back of that that field? No, that, that roadway uh, around that uh, ball field there was existing. And there's actually at the end of that little road, there's a gate, um, like a metal gate that you could open up and access that side of the site. So that we were using that uh, for contractor parking mostly once the wells got put in and, and, and storage. We had a lot of uh, storage boxes over there and a lot of uh, stuff. Right, but then you had to extend it to go, go closer to the site, right? Oh yeah, once we stripped the topsoil, um, it was pretty much a sand and gravel below the topsoil, so we didn't have to create a road. It was just good soil. We just used that to get access to safe and that's all. Okay, so does that stay, that part? No, that will that will all be grass once um, once we're done. The, the, the gravel road to that backstop and back of that backstop was existing, so that will be brought back to existing conditions. But as far as a, that, a roadway from that area to like the pump house area, you, it would, that would be grass. Uh, 
Okay. But you can do you can do uh, like a grass uh, paving uh, if you wanted to drive vehicles from that area down to the pump house today. They do make uh, you can make grass drivable. I don't know. I was just thinking, wouldn't it be advantageous to keep it, or is that inviting traffic you don't want? Yeah. No. That'd be a call from the town. Other questions for Al, based on his pictures? I have one more. Oh, go ahead. Are there any classrooms that are actually complete? Um, we will have, um, we'll start having classrooms complete um, probably a week from Monday. And how about the library and the gym? Um, the gym, we've, um, We've drywalled the uh, the exterior gym walls. Uh, those have been taped. Um, we've been concentrating on the cafe, which is right next door. Once the cafe is done, then we'll go into the gym. Yep. The, um, the sports equipment, all the equipment for the gym is coming next week. Your backs, your uh, all the all the uh, material is on site. We have it in storage, but they're coming next week to install it. And, and then how, once, how complete is the cafe? The cafe, um, hopefully by the end of this week, everything is done except for the porcelain floor, which will, that is definitely starting on Monday. Whatever is not done will be done in conjunction with the porcelain floor. The, uh, the gym floor itself, uh, once we get a uh, final kind of space, We'll be able to put that wood floor down in the gym. That is a requirement for, for putting that back. And I wouldn't put it there without the HVAC in place. So, but we have all we have all the material here. All the wood floor is on site. Okay, um, everyone, if you don't, go ahead, go ahead. Al, can you, in a, in a general way, or just overlooking looking over the entire project? What do you feel like is going particularly well, particularly smoothly right now? Um, what do you? It's most kind of like a lot of areas that are starting to come together. Um, I like the way the bus loop is coming together with the with the walk. It's it's got it's got uh, precast curbing. It's got monolithic walks. It's got regular walks. Uh, it's got like double layer <laughs> curbing walks. To curbing. Um, it's interesting to see all that go together and. Uh, I can't wait to see binder on it that next week. That and uh, the parking lot is going well. A lot of it's underground right now. We've got um, uh, ninety five percent of the light poles uh, faces in and and wired. We have uh, the drainage is all done in there. Um, so once the binder is done next week on the bus loop, they'll be they'll be into uh, the grade out that parking lot. Um, on tool that will have all the curbing in the parking lot done by Wednesday of next week. Uh, That's the 28th. We got sight lights coming the 29th. Um, we've got trees that are being tagged right now for that front parking lot. Um, so I think it's going to come together uh, quickly. Great. And and um, where what are some things that not that you lose sleep, but that you might lose sleep over? Um, we well, we still don't know about the parts and pieces for the generator. I'm sorry, Al, you're garbled. You don't I'm know. Sorry. About the uh, the generator, we're still missing those two pieces, um, and uh, there's no update to when we're going to see those pieces. So that that's bothersome because we need the we need life safe. That's part of life life safety. Um, we are looking into um, a, a 50 kVA generator. Um, as maybe a, uh, a substitute, um, but we don't know yet if that's gonna work. That would be just big enough to run the life and safety portion yes. of the building. Yeah. Right. And, and what else has you uh, gnashing your teeth? Um, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's just coordinating everyone to get Get done with their work in the in the in the correct sequence, 
so that the next guy can do his work. You know, that, that's always a battle, but um, it, it's like a full-time job. <laughs> coordinating subs in each area. And how about um, Saturdays? Are you getting any uh, overtime? Are oh, yeah. Just, we're actually working Saturday and Sunday for the next two weekends. Great. The millwork contractor um, is, is working uh, Sundays as well. Yeah, so we've had, we've had a, a, some pretty good turnout on, uh, on Saturdays. Um, we had uh, probably 40 men last Saturday. For, you know, for the past four or five Saturdays, we've had, you know, 40 to 50 guys working. That's great. Steve, yep. you had a question? Yeah, with respect to the generator, uh, at the last meeting, I think you said the two pieces we needed were a radiator and an alternator, which we might be able to source from a different uh, supplier. Is that still the case? Or we're trying to stick with the same outfit yeah we're, well we're trying to stick with what's what is required for that uh generator i did find out that the alternator it's not um like the alternator that we think of as like if it's in a car and it charges your battery this is an alternator that actually produces the the power so it's a large part of the generator you know and so the alternative that we're looking at would be uh a permanent alternative or a, like a rent rental generator until the first one gets those two pieces in a rental generator. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Just to, just to chime in on that. So this is Adam with Colliers, by the way. So we coordinated with Colorado and the mechanical engineer, electrical engineer. Um, they are the ones that came up with the calculation with regard to what the amount is. Um, and so there's two potential avenues for sourcing that, plan B, if you will, generator. One is just through the private markets. The other is through uh, Cummins themselves who manufactures generator. So uh, on a conversation with their sales rep, they indicated that they'd be able to potentially look and see within their own system and network providing that level of generator uh, while we're waiting for, for the full permanent generator. Okay, any other questions for Al? Anyone online? If I don't see you online, just speak up. Because <laughs> I don't know if I can see everybody. Um, okay. Other item? Uh, do you want to go over procurement log? Uh, sure. Um, procurement log. Um, Al, anything new? Or are there some of the things that we're, we've been waiting for um, have arrived or we have commitments on those? Yeah, we started taking stuff off the commitment log, actually. Let me, let me get the Ben's log here. Find it. You don't have anything yet, Adam, do you? I see material procurement down there, right above meetings. Uh, oh, there it is. <laughs> it's updated yesterday. Yeah, I see that. You could zoom in a bit, Al. Zoom in a little. Okay. Better? Yeah, that's that that's better. So okay. uh, some of the critical items that we've been waiting for that are we now have in hand or what are do you have some examples? Um, the linear wood ceiling uh, we haven't got, but we, we, we're told it's it's close to being delivered like a week away. Um, the skylight, we're missing that one skylight in uh, above stair two. Um, we're expecting it at 1028. The date hasn't changed, so we're hopeful that we'll get that. Uh, not critical. I mean, we can we can live without it. I'd like to get it in while, while there's no kids around, so that's good. Overhead coiling grills, we have the grills. Uh, what we're waiting for are the tubes to support the grill, uh, which comes from a local shop, so I'm not worried about that. The wall covering in pro um, is the, um, the wall covering that uh, is like the wainscot in the corridors of the classrooms. Uh, that's coming uh, the end of next week. 
Um, the Wolf Gordon, we just, uh, it's not Wolf Gordon anymore. It's, I think, believe it's MDC now. And uh, that, we just we just put the order in for that. I believe it was today. Um, what else do we have? Pumps and VFDs for water tanks. Um, we um, have all the VFDs that we need on site now. So this isn't any, this isn't critical. We do have the pumps to the, pump to the water tank. Uh, the generator, we just talked about that. I don't have an update on the interior lighting controls. There, it was supposed to be here 826. Uh, a note received on 722, need update. Uh, I'll have to work on that tomorrow or Monday. Oh, are those light switches or is that something that's in one of the electrical rooms? This would be in one of the electrical closet and it, it works on the lighting controls of every room. They have sensors now and occupancy sensors and uh, dimming and all that stuff. Thank you. Yep. Where are we at on the exterior lighting? There was some, I know there's, a, there's some of them that were coming in, a lot have been received, but there were some stragglers. Um, I'm told we have all the, all the lights. They're going to start coming uh, Wednesday of next week or Thursday. But they're coming the 29th. I believe it might be Thursday. They're they're in someone's hand, in Sullivan Benson's hand or Ferguson's hand. Yes. Uh, and then the other other question I had was with regard to the the VFDs. So I know there was some of the permanent ones have been received, and you have all you need to start doing some of the startup, but there are more being re uh, received later. Is that correct? Do we have a sense of when those are coming? Basically all the final permanent ones, not just the ones that you need to get started up. Yeah, I believe we have uh, two temporary VFDs. Um, and I don't know what the, it's a uh, need update. So I'm, I'm not sure what the, what the timeline is for shipping on those or receiving them. But we have the VFDs that will work. We just have to swap them out when they get there. Al, you mentioned that you'd um, taken the trailers off the site. Is that totally what I'm wondering is if there is still stuff uh, stored that uh, is expecting to be installed? Yeah, we um, at where our trailer is by the road, we yep. have uh, we have four or five storage trailers uh, there and we're going to be putting uh, the electrician's office trailer over there as well. So we do have we do have temporary storage still, and once we get that stuff installed, those those containers will leave. But you have now installed everything that had been waiting on site, or more or less everything. Um, uh, no, we still have like all the gym equipment is in those trailers, all the okay. gym flooring, um, things that we're going to need that that we you know we got early. Um, so, but once those those items get installed in the building, the trailer gets emptied, the trailer goes away. But it's all in our little area over there. We'll pass it off. Thanks. Yep. Okay, other questions? I don't see any online either. So, um, okay, I'll thank you very much for that update. Okay, I do have another meeting at five. So unfortunately I do have to log off. Okay, all right. Well, thanks for joining us then. Thank, thank you everyone. Okay, then uh, architects update. Jeff. Let me just share my screen. I'll sh start with the uh, the image for Tony. I don't know if you guys can see that yet. Yes. Okay, so there's your glue lamb wood. It's just slightly whitewashed. Um, so you still feel the grain through, but it's not a loud uh, grain. So if that answers your question, Tony. Yeah. And I think this is the cafeteria. So sometimes the photos get a little blurry, so it's hard to tell, but it's definitely a stacked glue lamb, slightly whitewashed to sort of neutralize the knots and imperfections of normal glue lamb beams. Thank you. Yeah. Other than that, it's just been uh, quite a bit of hustle. I've been trying to get there, I say two, three times a week in the morning just to help these guys out. Every time I go there, there's a ton of questions. So just trying to keep the pace up, 
trying to be proactive. If there's a little thing that happened on the site, we creatively think and brainstorm and get it resolved and get it done. Hopefully with no uh, monetary consequences or compromising any other quality detailing and stuff. So it seems like everybody's on board on the site to make sure that we're all a team and trying to get this thing done as fast as we can without compromising. We're catching quite a few things, but we're resolving quite a few things in the field. So okay, that's, that's all I have. Questions for Jeff. Jeff, there's nothing actually brewing somewhere that you're negotiating and so forth that you're going to come and tell us you've been working on and here's this great solution? We'll see. There was that stair. We got that. I think that's nipped in the butt. They got a, I talked to them this morning about fixing all the rails. Once they moved that, stairs moved, definitely. They moved it up. So now they got to fix the heights of the rails and make sure the stringers line up and then fix the detailing. So that's moving forward. Um, there is one thing that's come up recently. I just wrote a, um, a proposal request out for, I'm working with uh, Scranton in the, in the toilet rooms. Um, evidently, we got the taller partitions and the doors, uh, so they're not standard because I measured them. But because we did four inches off the floor, um, it's uh, like three inches short on the top. So I posed a question to a few people, Randy, who, who brought it up to my attention. He caught it. Um, and I noticed there was a couple other things that we probably need to consider as well. And that was the joint at the door where it hits the stop. I think there's typically a standard two inch tall uh, uh, closer strike piece. So I was looking through the crack and I thought, you know what, we should probably do a 71 inch or full tall uh, strike and closure piece so that no kids can peer in in the uh, strike side of the door. The jams, the hinge side is fine. It's tight. But. So there was a acknowledgement that we should probably go even higher than the six foot that we presented a long time ago with the four inch gap. So I put a, together a package and sent it out uh, to Al uh, about what, three hours ago um, to do a six foot four top of wall, partition wall and door and do a full strike stop on the strike side of the door. I've been calling Scranton and talking to Jim to see how fast he can get this stuff done. And uh, uh, it's going to cost something. So I'm waiting for him to put it together. And I've told him to work the numbers, sharpen the pencil, and we'll see what we got. And Ben over there at Newfield is working on the New, New England uh, partition guys, too, to make sure that the labor is not going to be an issue. So good thing Randy caught it. We caught it. We're trying to nip it in the butt. Um, and we'll see when the, when the costs come back what it's going to be. Okay, any other questions for Jeff? Anything else? Let's see. Yeah, there's uh, one thing that's popped up. Uh, the canopy backside where the sprinkler pipes are, the guys accidentally cut them too short. So we brainstormed to figure out how to extend the deck and make sure that that's going to cover it. Uh, yeah, it was just things like that, little things all over the place. I did notice the day that, that they didn't put the steel edging on the steel beams high up on the roof for the wood ceiling to tie into. So. I should probably start writing a bunch of uh, PRs for a bunch of credits because I can. I should probably make a list of all these because there's going to be some coming things Are that they, they end up. Is is Ben aware of that or Al aware? Yeah, of today it? today they asked me a question about how to end the cafeteria ceiling at the tall glass. So I was, I was looking up there and I we pulled the details up. I noticed they didn't do any of the 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 welding of the tab continuous tab around the whole beam in the web of the beam to support that wood ceiling edge. It's not an issue because they got they're, they're screwing every two feet basically with these industrial fasteners right up through the blocking and through the deck. So it's not not an issue. It's just a, the detail is going to be the same in the end when you look at it. It's just we paid for all this welding and all this stuff. So I got to go back and track all that stuff. And there's a few other things that I've I found that we got to put it together. I got to put it together. So that'll be forthcoming. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Anything else for Jeff? Okay, thanks, Jeff. Uh, then we'll move on to the OPM update. So we, we spoke about a number of things I was going to address tonight with regard to the, the yeah, generator. Let me just play the microphone a little bit closer. Is that better? Yeah, there we go. 
Um, so we, we spoke about a number of things uh, I was going to talk about tonight with regard to the generator and some of the procurement items as being items to watch. Um, the question was asked earlier about when the you know, when the classroom a classroom will be done and what's going on with the flooring and that's that's the key item that we're watching in terms of just progress and sequence because we can't start punching rooms until the rooms are done we can't start finishing rooms until the flooring is at least prepped and we see a mock-up for it so there's a lot of question marks that need to be resolved that you can only really address once something's actually been finalized and you go to actually inspect it as opposed to oh yeah we'll do this in a week and we'll do that in a week and it'll all be done you know high fives all around um so that's the that's the key sequence that we're looking at towards actually driving towards finishing the building um there are a number of pcos uh that we'll look at here in a moment um and just as a um before i forget about it there may be a need for special meeting next week, dependent upon some of these other PCOs that couldn't be finalized in time, um, just based on how exigent the need is to get them approved quickly. Uh, but we'll we'll address those as they come up. Um, any that can be addressed with the expedited subcommittee will likely go that route just for the sake of speed, but there may be one or two things that come up that we need, might need a, an interim meeting for just to approve those items. So um, you know, Tasha and, and Randy and myself can help coordinate if necessary for next week. Um, moving on uh, to the signage. Um, a front roadway signage. I had sent out. Oh, Chris. Question from Chris McNamara. Thank you. I'm mute, Chris. Sorry, I have a question about that wall covering and the, the digital wall covering. Did I miss that or? The, that was one of the items that uh, was a procurement concern. There was some issues with the vendor and Newfield. Uh, my understanding from Newfield was that they had grave discrepancies about the quantity of wall covering that was actually needed. Um, and so there was an alternative manufacturer that was found submitted to TSKP and they approved the alternative product. So having issues with the vendor, this was a situation we could just go with another vendor at no change or cost to the project. Sorry, Adam, if I could say something, um, yeah. you're almost hundred percent correct. Uh, Susan did pass right. along. <laughs> Susan, oh, no, you, no, you're more than 100 percent correct. Um, Susan, Susan did send me the conditional approval based on the fact that it does meet the the, the issue was was that it was unclear on that submittal from um, was it MDC or whatever that company is if it was an impact resistant, which is a 30 pound. Um, uh, uh weight right so that's the minimum cutoff so we were trying to make sure because their submittals earlier did wasn't clear about that so it looks like it's a 32 pound weight so it's it is a heavy duty high impact resistant because i didn't want the kids or anybody to start tearing this stuff off the wall mm -hmm. so now we're on a, the a second condition is to make sure that they can get all the custom colors that we asked for and that it can be digitally printed in the same way on that same material, which looks like it can, but it's a conditional approval based on those items. Yeah, understood. Okay. Thank you. All right, so I will, uh, I'll pull up some images here from the signage mockups. Um, hopefully anyone that wanted to see them was able to do so yesterday before oh. they were destroyed. Just a second, Adam. Oh, no. Char Charmaine, do you have your hand up or is that in error? <laughs> okay she's waiting okay all right go ahead adam all right so let me <laughs> so here were the uh the three uh signage options that the merge the signage consultant had developed this one on the right was the full scale that five by five panel going on the effectively seven foot uh, overall signage package uh, with the monument stone at the bottom. Uh, this middle one was at three quarter scale and the leftmost one was at half scale. Uh, so this was installed on the fence right at the entrance where it would generally be located. The signage would actually be a few feet back. I think it's approximately 10 feet back of this. It's just the fence was in the way. So this is 16 uh, feet from the edge of the uh, pavement and 19 feet from the edge of the road. Um, so I took a couple photos 
when they were installed, just kind of give you a sense of what a car might look like. Is that a six foot tall fence? Or... Yes. Okay. Yes. So kind of looking at it from the roadway from each, mm. each direction. And then in addition to that, I spoke with uh, Jeff and uh, the landscape architect, Richter Segan, with regard to uh, what this area might look like. Um, and so there was a tree, if you recall, there was a tree in that general vicinity as well as some fencing. So the, the thought was is that to avoid encroaching at the DOT right of way, uh, the signage could go on this location, set back a couple feet from the property line to allow for the lighting and such to be installed. Then the fencing could wrap behind it and then continue onward. This fence, it's a black, uh, like pool estate style fencing. And so it's not chain link in this, at this location. Um, so this would sort of frame the background of the, of the signage there. Um, and that should result in the same quantity of fencing. So there shouldn't be a change order from new field of just be installing the fencing at a different location and installing the tree at a different location. And then just to remind everyone what, what the overall full scale sign looked like with the five by five panel. So this would just shrink proportionately if the three quarter or half size was desired. Okay. So the, the, if, if there's a consensus among the group, the, the notion would be to um, you know, approve moving forward with developing a, a request for bid for some signage size. Merge would finalize their specifications. They're you know, largely done, but they just need to tweak some of the last selections of, or the, the specifications rather for the stone and whatnot. Um, and then put it out to bid. Simultaneously, it would be put on the plans that go back to planning and zoning commission because that was one of the conditions of approval for the project was if there was to be a roadway sign, it needed to come back for planning and zoning approval prior to being installed. Um, so that's okay. the sort of the next steps for this component. Okay, look at Mary. How high is the, um, the fencing that will run behind it? Yes, so actually I have... So it is a four, is it four or six. six. Let me pull up the plan, of course. Oh, it's on a different sheet. I don't think I have that sheet handy. Um, no, Jeff, do you know offhand? Yeah, do you know? Yeah, let, me, let, me, let me pull it up. Let me see. I think it's like L121 has it on there. Did uh, anybody get to go by and see? Mm -hmm. I did I also. Okay. Um, so um, you have a comment? Are you, you're you going to wait. I'm curious to know height. Yeah, just to kind it's of get a, it's, it's Sorry, it's a double leaf metal picket gate, four foot high. Four foot high. So Adam, can you go back to the image? Um, the drawing is what I was looking at. I'm oh, curious. This one? Sure. Where's the four foot line there, right around the word? The human is probably six feet tall. Exactly. Yeah, right. so it's like probably right at the elementary uh, yeah. word level. His armpit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so four foot three is here and it's on top of about a foot and a half, so. Maybe maybe about Mansfield. Just on the top elementary, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, you got it. Call it Chris. Um, I am frustrated that we keep getting the same design. I I don't um, I don't think we want. Can you go back to that picture? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the extra um, columns, pillars on the sides are unnecessary and add to maintenance in the long run. I don't think that they add to the design at all. Um, and I've also said a number of times um, to no avail that the sign is just plain too tall. All the, all of the uh, blue on the upper left is, is helpful um, to the mission of the sign. 
even to the um, mission of branding. Um, my preference would be a longer, wider sign. Um, as I've said, as I've said before, again, without the columns, you've got the space. I don't know how important it really is to make this mimic whatever other sign there is that's like this, and I'm not sure where that is. Um, but I really think this needs some basic reworking, not massive reworking, but basic reworking. And when I saw the actual signs, it doesn't feel as evident here, but when I saw the ones that you did mock up, um, Adam, they, the letters just look, um, to me, to get picky, the font is just too bold, too thick. Uh, and I think that should be thinned a little bit. I also really don't think the blue, uh, the white on blue is the way to go. Blue is a way of fading in whatever material you make it. But my main thing is the sign is too tall. I would go for that middle sign at the very least, but I don't, I still don't think that it's necessary to have all that blue to the left of the um, seal. And uh, that should be pulled down. The word should go to the left if you have to have all that. And again, I, I've said this before. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Chris, Chris Mactabo. Thanks, thanks, Chris. Yep. Thanks. Um, you know, when you said uh, if we choose another size sign, that it would be proportionately scaled down the the whole operation. So the base with the stone has, like you said, about a foot and a half of stone, and then the sign starts at that point. Would that foot and a half still stay, or would that be reduced accordingly? I would imagine it would reduce accordingly. So that way, the, the, the example, the half size sign is only two and a half feet tall. So it'd look extremely silly on a, on a one yeah. and a half foot base. So my understanding from the signage consultant is basically the whole thing would just shrink in proportion. Yeah. I would confirm that prior to issuing the bid document. And if that's what the committee ultimately uh, wishes, that can be communicated. Um, but that, um, that was my understanding. Okay, and I know that the sign has to hang on something. It can't just be suspended somewhere. And I believe that's the function of those posts on the side. Um, however, it, I think it might be helpful to see, um, well, I don't know if we're at that point yet, but I'm, I'm still kind of in favor of the half size, uh, but I could be persuaded to go three quarters if I could see what the overall whole dimension of the sign would look like. Hey, Tony, you had your hand up, is that? Yeah, um, I kind of like the three quarter size. Um, I know that Chris would like to redesign the whole thing, but uh, that process is done, and um, I mean we paid plenty for it, and there was lots of opportunity to talk. So mm -hmm. I don't want to revisit the whole the whole design, but um, uh, slightly smaller would be fine with me. Other people want to weigh in. I will um, kind of disagree with everybody. <laughs> so I drove by there, um, and I I liked the full size sign. Um, drove up, I was like, "That's it." Um, it's not it's not dominating the landscape. I just didn't think it was that that large. Um, I I mean, so I. I will, I think along with Tony, respect the work that um, Cynthia and, and all the people she's consulted with over the last couple of years have put in. Um, the sizing expertise from the professionals that, that are doing the wayfinding, um, the coherence throughout the town. I, so I think those are all important considerations. And so um, my, to my preference was the sign as proposed. Anyone else want to weigh in? We just are going to start making some motions. We've been perseverating on this for months. Yeah. I want to come to conclusion. Um, if I, Randy, go ahead. I unfortunately did not get to see it uh, in person, but looking at the pictures now, uh, I think the larger sign is the way to go. Just thinking about that sign with the entire backdrop, it would almost seem silly to me to have it any smaller. Well, if you look at the picture right now, sorry to interrupt, this is Jeff. Um, if you look at the west elevation of the school back there, right? And then you see that very large sign up front there. Yeah. It feels a little big. I mean, imagine what's out there in between is parent drop off, 
some trees and there's playground equipment in the distance and a softball field. So it's going to be this floating giant sign there oh, man. with a four foot fence behind it. Very so Jeff, what size do you think would be appropriate? What would proportional, what would look good? Well, I'm, I'm thinking the middle, you know, the middle, but I'm kind of agreeing with Chris on those columns on the sides so I'm, I'm 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 sort of holding back a little bit because I think this is this is the town's decision. Um, so I agree. Come on with, now, this is what we pay you for. Let's I know. Uh, I would say I would honestly I would say uh, maybe the middle one, and then rethink those columns, and then uh, think about how you can put the base in a way that that works its way uh, into. Not exact alignment, but at least some proportional relationship to the fence that's going around right next to it. Um, I think that can be the variable is maybe the stone base. And then we can, you know, throw a four foot piece of something behind there and just study it, I guess. Are these signs still up there? No, no they are very destroyed right now. Oh, bummer. Because of the rain and the wind. I mean, I think it's close. I just, I just, you know, and I, I, I agree with everybody, but the problem is looking at the scale of the building in the distance, knowing that there's not going to be much in the foreground except that four foot fence and trees and then everything else is kind of off in the distance. I think the middle one might be, might be the better one. But you have the big one everywhere else in the town. So, you know, I'm not so into the branding thing. I'm with Chris on that. But it's a town wide decision. So I'm listening to Randy. I'm listening to Ryan. I'm, I hear everybody. Um, so I could go either way. So to provide some some context about the the options moving forward, just as motions are considered or not. Um, so they're just just to, as a baseline. There's no requirement for the planning and zoning commission or occupancy or anything of that nature to have this in place prior to the school opening. So that's just one portion of it. If a sign is desired, now is in a, uh, a good time to get it resolved because we're going back to the Planning and Zoning Commission for the rest of the site plans. If you know this was to be deferred, we'd miss that portion of it and there'd have to be a separate application. Somebody would have to do it. No one's currently lined up to go and provide that application, et cetera. So there'd be a little bit of, uh, of additional work that somebody would need to get paid to go and, and put in the application and do all the things for. If there's any redesign, merges indicated that, you know, simple scaling down to three quarter size or whatnot would be, you know, no effort, but if there's any sort of redesign, that's, they've made it clear that's outside of their scope and there'd be additional fees and getting a contract lined up, or I'm not sure exactly what the procurement method would be there, but in terms of working on changing the design, that's not something they've been retained to do. So just keep all that in mind as they're, as you're contemplating posts or changing to the sign versus scaling the size versus making a, a motion to move forward or putting on the back burner. Those are the sort of the locus of, of impacts, if you will. Right. And if it's not done as part of the project, if it's left to the district or the town later on, there would be no reimbursement. Correct. Thank you. That's good stuff to um, consider, Adam. So I drove by. Clearly, in my opinion, the small one is silly. <laughs> um, that largest one that we're looking at right now, I'm okay with that the way it is but it's not two feet off the ground. So my concern with that large one is that once it is sitting up on stone and it has the posts that it might be too large. Um, but then I go back to the, the wayfinding piece. And if you really want people to be able to see it, it's a busy road. Right. You're not, I mean, people are slowing down because it's a school zone, but um, so I, I do get a little concerned about the midsize one. Um, and I do agree with Chris that there is a lot of wasted space in the sign, but 
I hear what you're saying about redesigning. And so I don't know how much clarity my thoughts just okay. brought to that argument, but can that's what I'm thinking. Make a motion? <laughs> sure, make a motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the three quarter sign, which would be the one in the middle and the current display on the screen. I second, second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, is there any other discussion questions? Uh, I I think I would like um, input from the designer on the spacing of the letters in that case, so they're not make sure they're not too close. I have one um, question. I have one yeah, question Jeff. if I can say something. Now, Scott's an architect as well, and I think we should give him the opportunity to to weigh in on this. Here's the I, I, I appreciate Jeff the, uh, the the confidence. Um, you know, I think there's there's quite a number of cooks in the kitchen right now, but um, you know, it, it's sounding like the consensus of the middle sign on the stone base, in, in my opinion, I think would uh, would be a nice um, gesture for the for the site. Okay. Okay. I like the bigger one when I went by. <laughs> okay. um, so anyway, uh, so we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? And to, oh. to clarify the motion, would that include the the revised location here as shown oh. by the landscape architect? I, the does anybody have any objection to that location? It looks like a, a well thought through place for me. Okay, yes, I would include that. Right, okay, Chris. <laughs> Okay. All right. I I was, uh, <laughs> do you not want that to be part of the motion? With the location. The location. Location. No, I mean, I I think it should actually be more of a blade sign, frankly. But then it would require two sides, which would really blow the uh, designers out of the water. Mm -hmm. So, I think we okay. go with the way it's pictured okay. here. Okay. All right. Uh, then, all in favor of the motion, please. Say aye or indicate. Aye. 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 Hold on. Aye. Okay. So it's an eight to one vote. <laughs> okay, so that's approved. And thank you. I'm glad we're moving on past that. <laughs> okay. Um, Randy. Yes. If it turns out that we've made a mistake, you can all, or whoever was the one well that was me okay you can well, I'll, I'll, I'll hold it over everybody if it looks wrong <laughs> yes exactly i've done that on a couple of things myself <laughs> <laughs> okay all right um all right so that that's it for uh owners up owners uh, opm update is there anything there before i move into any other questions comments concerns before i move on to pcos i have a quick one. Oh yes Steve. can you just comment on our time schedule or timeline and where we're at and what we're looking at from your perspective oh, for the overall project so that that is uh, you'll you'll notice there's not been schedule updates yeah. submitted with the package <laughs> um, and that's uh, for a discrete reason where it kept changing and we didn't have reliable information so we didn't want to start publicizing information that's unreliable um, so to that effect uh, you know right now there are still talks about whether it's you know October or you know sometime in early November or some other date, I don't have a, a, a concrete time frame, and we keep seeing growths and spurts in terms of progress. Mm -hmm. So some of those elements that we saw in the photos today were different than when I was there a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the risk is really heavily weighted in things like the generator and the completion of the interior finish schedule. So I'm I'm extremely reluctant to say you know, one date versus another, just because if those elements get resolved and those risks get taken off the table, they could very rapidly come to a conclusion. Um, or I could be wrong three, three seconds from now as soon as we get a phone call about something else that's gone awry. So that's, in terms of, of progress, you know, it, it's still on the same general track that we've been kind of focusing on, targeting on. Obviously we're past our August 12th original substantial completion date, um, or not original, but most recent substantial yeah. completion date, I should say. Um, but it, there's still too many things we're trying to get refined. And what we've discussed with Newfield is uh, toward basically the end of September, the early uh, early part of October, 
once all these cards are on the table and we shouldn't have some of these question marks about the floor grinding and whatnot, mm -hmm. having another leadership meeting to identify what is the date that we can start to plan around and publicize. And we've had a few town leadership meetings with Newfield's leadership to that effect. Um, but the answer to your question about you know, my, my thoughts on the matter is it's not going to be done in three weeks, but right. five months isn't likely either. So. <laughs> I was a little surprised because I thought we had, uh, or I, I remember having a conversation about the wall coverings mm -hmm. at least three meetings ago, yep. if not four. And I thought Newfield said that if the contractor didn't order them that day, he was ordering them the next day. They tried. And now it's a month uh, the, and a half later. The, my understanding from Newfield is that the vendor would not allow them to place the order, which makes about as much sense to you as it does to me right now. Okay. So uh, that was some the reason for some back and forth in that particular element. Obviously, the building can open without the okay. colorful wall coverings on there from a code perspective. Obviously, the building would be finished when we ideally open, but it's those sorts of elements where identifying you know, if something were to go uh, all awry with the wall coverings, but everything else was in place, does the town want to open the school building? Just, you know, wouldn't have some wall coverings? That's a very different decision than we don't have a generator for fire life safety. Well, then you can't open. So, but we have, right. we have like, <clears throat> so this is what I was asking at the last meeting, and I didn't want to get into the same position as the, with the DOAS. Like, I would like to have options so that it doesn't mm -hmm. become, and it sounds like we maybe have options on this. So, hopefully, it shouldn't be something that delays things. Right. So that's a fair way to look with at the, it. With the wall coverings? I'm sorry, with the, with the, the generator. With There's the, a, the generator, there appears to be a couple of avenues that we can source the temp generator and basically hardwired into uh, the building to get it. So that way, we have the required code compliant elements. Then, when the new generator comes on, you swap, swap it over it out. the weekend while it's closed. and and replace it with a permanent unit. And I, I should have asked this before and I didn't, I just forgot. But uh, with respect to the DOAS, do we know when that's going to get fired up for the first time or when it's planned to start testing that? That sh I mean, they're working on parts of that now. Um, I don't want to speak for Al, but I, I last I heard it should be in a, in a week or two, I think that they start to do some of the, the firing on and start to do some of those testings in, in October. Last question. Sorry, I, I'm monopolizing this here. Um, Oh, what I write it down. Oh, uh, final testing. Are we do we have any more smoke tests planned? And when do we plan to do the blower door test? Now that the last curtain wall is in and the building is tight, except for the one skylight, can we do the final testing to make sure we're tight? Or? So, I just heard today that the revision that revisions have been made to the A wing for the the leak at the roof wall gap. So uh, we're scheduling fog testing for that make a portion of it. We still have not yet done a fog test in C at all. So that's still forthcoming. And the gym. Scheduled them. Yes, yeah. that's okay. right, the gym, yes. And then with the large curtain wall, there's also a potential, to, uh, uh, there's another test that um, we're getting some pricing on to explore testing that curtain wall option. It's a separate, not a fog test, not the spray water test, but a, a different one um, that won't be one of the items for the next week. Okay. Um, uh, special meeting if we can get that pricing by then. Are we still doing a blower tour test at oh, the yeah. end? Yeah, okay. Yes. But that's, we don't schedule that yet. That's, that's later. No, that's okay. in a little bit. Thank you. Go ahead. Are all the exterior doors installed now? I don't believe 100% yeah, are. I, I, have so. to, okay. I have to check, but I think some of the back utility doors might not be in. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not. The main entrance, uh, the back entrance still has plywood. I think the West A-Wing, they were putting them in this morning. And I believe some areas in the B wing, they're starting, but yeah, they got quite a few to do. And to that point with this very heavy rain that we had this time, which was heavier, I think, than the rain last time, is the building holding up? Is it, is it dry where we expect it to be? Well, I haven't, seen, I haven't noticed any leaks since I've been, and I've been actively looking for them. So I haven't seen any leaks. Uh, so as, my, has, as has Joe from Collier's, and, every time he goes after a rain, that's the first thing he calls me about in the morning is, oh, but I didn't find any leaks. So, and I'm knocking on so wood, just well. hoping that it's going to stay that way. Okay, uh, PCOs? PCOs. Uh, let me share my screen again here.
Okay, um, so the first one up for consideration is PCO 110. Um, this was an item that actually came up, you know, almost a, over a, well over a year ago in terms of some trees, uh, some smaller trees along the southern perimeter of the property by where the playground was going, where once the design was finalized and they looked at the trees, they were trees in the way that weren't on the show, survey. Um, so this was $3,400 to remove those trees so the playground could be put in place. So this was already done. Correct. <laughs> it was done in and August. Now we want to pay for it. It was a, it, technically a claim more than a PCO, but yes. Okay. Um, our questions on that? Would someone like to make a motion to approve PCO 110? I, I will make a motion to approve PCO okay. 110. Thank you, Chris. Um, is there a, is there a second? Thank you, Madison. Any other questions? Thank you. Yes. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm understanding this correctly. So can you just give me another run through? Yes. The trees are there. They were there. They're, they were trees that were not on the original survey that the design was based off of. So the playground was designed in the spot. It's the, the older children's playground. When the site contractor was going through and when these trees are in the way, I there was see. a question almost a year ago about, hey, we think we're going to need to take these trees down. It was confirmed the trees needed to come down. Since now they are installing the playground, the site contractor removed them out of the way and said, hey, I didn't, my, my bid didn't include these trees. It wasn't part of the scope. Okay. That's what the cost is for. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so we have a, a motion and a second. Is any other questions? I, I have a question. Oh, go ahead, Tony. It says removal of memorial trees. Are these trees that were placed in memory of somebody and do they have to be replaced? I don't know why they're called memorial trees, to be honest. Uh, Jeff married, or married, you know. Tony, I, I think that they are. Um, from my years at Southeast, what I recall is that um, those markers that you see in the bottom of that photograph there. Yeah, yeah. those little, um, those aren't stumps. They're actually there. They had little plaques on them. So yes, they were in fact um, planted for staff members who had spouses who passed away while they were working at the school. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the identity of all of those, but that is was always my understanding during my tenure at Southeast. Didn't we make a commitment that memorial trees would be preserved? I, I remember talking about um, uh, removing if we if they had to be removed that we would reestablish another memorial tree in in honor of those same people. But I don't yeah. know that we talked about actually trying to take those trees and preserve them because that's very expensive. And I think some of them were not terribly healthy, as I recall. Um, but that's something we should look into, Tony. Uh, yeah, I, I think if, if we did make some kind of a commitment regarding those trees, we ought to make sure that we honor it. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, we will that's, follow up with that. Uh, yeah, I can, that's easy enough. I can, I can okay. Back. So um, in terms of the PCO, there's a motion and a second. Then all in favor of approving PCO 110, please um, indicate. Aye. 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 Any, any opposed or abstentions? Okay, thank you. All right, the next one, PCO 111. Uh, this is for uh, some storefront uh, in, the, in the gym that has some jams with uh, drywall uh, that needed to be added. Jeff, do you wanna talk about this? Yeah, can you scroll all the way down to the sketches? And rotate them, I guess. Yeah. Then the, all right. So, yeah, go up to the next one up. I think there's another one up too. Yeah. So basically, on the section drawings, we had a note that showed the soffit at the top and the return of the soffit to be chipboard. Um, but because of the way the masonry returns into the storefront, um, there was a gap that we didn't show anywhere. That that the question came up: well, What do we do with that gap? 
So the direction I gave them was to uh, scroll down as well to just fill that in with some quarter inch sheetrock since what's adjacent to there up above is all sheetrock when it returns into the jam. So uh, ended up being a cost for that. So the shaded area, you see that shaded area between the masonry and the storefront there where it says quarter inch chipboard. There's a stripe that goes up. And then if you continue on the other sketch, you'll see at the top of the masonry where the bull nose is, um, the chipboard wraps around the corner and is in the relatively in the same plane as the masonry. So it's that shaded area that goes all the way up. Steve, I have a question. Uh, no, I was going to make a motion okay. to approve change order number 111. I second that. Uh, I think we have Mary seconded that. Um, any other questions? Then all in favor, please indicate. Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Okay. Okay, next is 114. Uh, this is for fall protection at the skylights. Jeff? Uh, if you want to scroll down to that image they have there of the mesh, might have to rotate that as well. Evidently, OSHA uh, changed their criteria. I guess they used to acknowledge a 200-pound load applied perpendicular to the skylights. And at some point recently, they changed the regulation. They removed the 200-pound point load. And the language um, isn't really clear about, you know, how much a skylight should support. So that's all the skylight companies are up in arms and they're trying to resolve, uh, you know, the fall protection criteria. We noticed this because the skylights were on the roof and there was a sticker on one of the edge that said not for fall protection. Mm -hmm. So then that started us on a quest with uh, talking to Wasco and Velux and everybody and then they uh, told me that this is what has happened recently. So the new language um, states that employees must be protected from falling. And this can imply that OSHA is placing the responsibility for providing fall protection in accordance to OSHA regulations with the building owner, manager, and worker employer. So, you know, it's it's just this vague language that they changed it. They don't recognize the 200 point load. So we had to do some fall protection to meet OSHA requirements. So. I, I wrote a PR to do either. There's two options to, to resolve this. One is to do the mesh, which overlaps and has a band that ties into the edge of the skylight, or there's a whole rail system that's on a ballasted weight system that's evidently is more expensive that just wraps around the skylight, like a access hatch ladder, you know, where you have the rails around it. So this was the least expensive of the two options, and it's all the skylights on the roof that will get this. Okay. Can I ask a question, Jeff? Yes. 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 Um, so, how far off of the skylight is this setup? It's uh, it's well, it varies depending on the shape of the skylight, but it's basically like a vault within two to three inches around the skylight of space, and you don't see it from looking up below because we have this. Um, uh, what's that? Uh, it's a uh, polycarbonate filled with aerogel. A horizontal layer that diffuses the light when it comes in and and refracts it in a in a spectrum that's like pleasant to the eye. So if you if you walk through the building and you'll see these skylights in the breakout areas, they're producing a nice even, uh, very calming kind of light in those spaces. So we do have a layer that's acting as a filtered lens that you won't see the mesh. It's just on the on the roof. It'll be there just for the fall protection, but. You know, OSHA is requiring it, so we have to do it. Thank you. I have a question. Oh, yes, go ahead, Mary. Do, do, do we think, like, leaves and things will get stuck in there and then eventually kind of obscure the the skylight? Or I can imagine things blowing up there. Or is, is it a maintenance thing? Like, we can kind of... I don't, you know, uh, sure, it can always happen, but I believe this mesh is what, I think it's a four inch diameter. Um, so, you know, if anything does get up there, I think periodically people are going to be up on the roof uh, looking at the skylights or the solar panels and everything else. So if they see something when they're up there, sure, they'll have to clear it off. But you'll also see shadows cast on the skylight from above. So that can be a, a, a way to uh, 
to notify somebody that there's might be something stuck in the mesh. I don't think we have any trees that are that close to the building anyway now, do we? No. Okay, is there a motion? Yes, I would like to make a motion to approve PCO 114. Second. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Chris. Uh, any other questions? Then all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Okay. Okay. Um, so there was a um, another motion, a draft motion that I can pull up here. Um, that was for the enhanced tree plantings and fence that we spoke about in the last meeting, the meeting before, for the um, for the buffer area by the neighbors. So those two PCOs, one is for a smaller tree option, one is for a uh, a larger tree option. Um, have been uh, developed and proposed by Newfield. There's the landscape architect noticed one of the elements they want to confirm with regard to the, I think it was building the size of the bushes, I believe. So the PCO isn't 100% ready for full approval tonight. However, it's one that wants to be approved more quickly. Um, so what uh, the motion I have provided here is, um, and we can review the PCOs in draft form now in a moment. But uh, essentially, if the committee has a, a desire for one option over the other um, to authorize uh, Randy to approve it next week or on Friday, as soon as it's ready, um, such that the trees can be procured and installed before the winter season. Um, so that's why it's not a full PCO motion, if you notice that. Um, in terms of the two options, uh, the PCO 113, um, which was for a, a approximately 18,800, again, just waiting final confirmation, um, was for the scope shown in that plan that I had shown to the group with the Eastern White Pines up a little higher back on the ridge towards the school, um, as well as the, uh, the more dense spruces here on the hill here, as well as some of the fencing that wasn't needed at other portions of the site to be reinstalled at the base of this downslope here at the request of this neighbor. Um, such as it hides some of the rocks and weeds and things that grow more rapidly now that there's not a forest behind it to limit some of the light coming through, um, as well as uh, uh, grinding down five of the stumps that are sort of visible from people's backyards um, for this neighbor, as well as this neighbor here on the corner, and some additional uh, native plantings uh, and bushes here at the in between the perimeter path and the bottom of the rain garden, just to install here to, to bring some more ecological you know, native diversity there. That was the big focus from this end neighbor. So that way there might be butterflies and some other opportunities that you know, might be educational, might just be good for the environment, um, that sort of thing. Um, so that was the, the scope of this work. Uh, the smaller option, as I mentioned, is uh, it's it's here it's the smaller option but it's with um, the spruces that were the larger size in the initial plantings there's also an option um, pco 115 for about four thousand dollars more that provides larger trees so these are larger than anything that's been planted out there so far um, and they uh, would be instead of seven to eight foot spruces um, as was initially being uh, put here, maybe nine to 10 foot spruces. And I believe it's uh, seven to eight foot pines. Um, we couldn't go any larger than that because they're not available, checked just in case. Um, but uh, if you recall, so some of the photos that was taken of the one neighbor that had the privacy and visual barrier concern, um, the largest one there was eight feet. So with the larger option, it'd be the trees that were uh, planting along the ridge would be a foot or two taller than that one. Um, versus with the smaller option, number 113 for the fourth round less, it'd be approximately the same size as that larger spruce that was uh, that was on the hill. Okay. Um, is that clear? So basically, um, the plantings are similar. The arrangement would be the same, just the size of the, the trees, especially for the, the... Right here. Those neighbors there, yes. right? Um, preference? Yeah, I'm fine giving Randy authority to approve this once it's ready. And my 
personal vote would be for the larger of the two. We saved money the first go around so that we would have more money to do a better job the second go around once we saw what we were working with. I think now that we've seen what we're working with, we know exactly where these trees should go to provide the best buffer. And I think we, uh, not only for the neighbors, but also for the privacy of the school, should put in uh, the larger trees. I agree. I agree. Okay. I'll make a motion for the larger trees. The option to approve Randy to approve the larger trees once uh, the final bid is ready. Second. This would be, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris, uh, for the second. And this would be an amount not to exceed. Correct. Okay. Okay. <laughs> The draft motion with 115 stapled in there. Yep. With 115, okay. Uh, okay, then we have a motion, we have a second. And all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, abstentions, okay. Okay, um, with that, that should be the end of the uh, PCOs if we wanna move to the invoice package. Okay, and the invoice package was posted for you. Um, questions on anything that was in there okay seeing none is there a motion i'm just wondering oh. about the discrepancies from colliers the amount and the approved amounts yes so that's uh that that's been consistent throughout the project what happens there is we have a uh, a purchase order for our bulk services and then the purchase order for reimbursables. Um, there's a couple of pack of vendors that have it set up that way. For example, some of the design uh, folks have uh, reimbursables and their main package. For uh, Collier's, it has the two purchase orders. So when we submit the single invoice, it's effectively the, the, the way to split the invoice. So it's tracked. So if you notice, 27,477 plus 14,445 equals 28,892. And that way it shows up as two lines, but it's effectively approving that portion of it for that PCO and a purchase order and approving that portion of it for that PO. Perfect. It is a little convoluted, I'll, I'll give you that. So yes, I would like to make a motion to approve the monthly invoice packet for August of 2022 dated today, including invoices from BVH, CES, Collier's Project Leaders, Gov Connection, Langen, MHA, TSKP Studios, and WB Meyer in the amount of $86,225.43. And Newfield's application for payment number 16 in the amount of $1,915,467.75 for a total approval of $2,000,000. $1,693.18. Okay, thank you for the motion. Second from Steve. Um, any last questions? And all in favor of approving the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Okay. That brings us then to adjournment. Oh, question? Can we please get an, um, Adam, just an update on what we've spent you know, that total, we spent $2 million here and yep, pretty soon it's real up. money kind of a thing. Yep, Thanks. Steve. Not to put the new superintendent on the spot, but I'm just wondering if you have anything uh, you want to add or say, or you want us to think about uh, before the next meeting or, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for your service. Uh, it has been a long journey for the building committee. Uh, and I am so appreciative of Randy's leadership uh, and your just service over time. Uh, I hope you were equally, I, in fact, I know you were. When we saw the pictures, I too had just been there recently and I'm thrilled to see what looks like a school. Uh, <laughs> amazing. Um, so we are uh, just um, waiting to get confirmation that we could set a date uh, for a substantial completion before we share with our families. I know families, especially given the challenges of transportation, uh, are willing to wait if they know there's something uh, tangible out there. And so as soon as we can share, we will. Uh, and then uh, it's really then shifting about how that transition will take place. And so I want the building committee to know that there are a couple things that we're already starting to talk about. One, routing buses. I learned that one. Uh, number two, <laughs> Uh, is to think about how we could do a soft opening so that, first of all, students and staff feel ready 
that we're not going to rush into the building until we feel comfortable with it. And that includes our families. We want to make sure that we have an opportunity before we move in and, and pull the plug for people to pull into the parking lot to, oh, you know, what is the door or, you know, where, where am I going to go? Uh, and that wouldn't be our grand opening. That would just be come in and walk the halls, get a sense of the space. Uh, and then it would be shifting to getting classrooms set up and, and engaging that space, having another open house opportunity. And then the more exciting part is the ribbon cutting. Uh, and I think that the good news with a delayed opening is that that really allows us to get settled and have a springtime, maybe even an Earth Day ribbon cutting uh, will be in session on April 22nd. So we're already looking at that date uh, that really signifies the sustain, you know, the sustainability of the project net zero. And then also gives us time to settle in, get used to the building, maybe some of the plantings take hold, um, but super excited. Um, so thank you again. Uh, we're tracking those critical path items along with you. Uh, and um, I feel more hopeful and more confident today than I have. So uh, great job. Okay, thanks, Peter. Yep. Mary. I'm wondering if um, when we meet next, it might be possible to see a paper copy of the floor plan. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. I may have one still kicking around in a folder somewhere. Um, but when Al was showing pictures earlier and he said, upper B, I find myself saying, who's in that space? What is that? Okay. Is that third grade? Is that first grade? Um, so for my purposes, it would be helpful just to have something that kind of let you see where people really are going to be. Yeah, as it gets closer. Something in front of you, small on maybe 11 by 17, or are you looking for like a large plan? No, I don't need the just, one that takes up all the space that... where we used to have to sit far apart from each other in order to look at them. But yeah. Okay, that's no problem. Perfect. Yeah, Thank that. you. Okay. All right, then uh, I would accept at this time a motion to adjourn. I'll move we adjourn. Thank you, Chris. Second. Second. Second for Mary. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. And we'll see you next time. Thank you all. Thank you, Andy. Thank you.